Nominal Christianity is one of the biggest challenges for European faith communities. And the United States is not far behind. The American Religious Town Hall meeting is now in session. America, America, God shed his grace on grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Welcome, friends, to the American Religious Town Hall meeting where the discussion of religious, political, and social issues is meant to promote the cause of religious freedom and to help us better understand each other. And now, here's your host and moderator, Pastor Jerry Lutz. Thank you, and I am also very glad that you've tuned into today's program. Looking forward to this discussion. You've heard from two of the panelists, yet you have not met them yet. I'd like for you to meet them all. So let's begin with the gentleman to my right. My name is Bishop Michael Olson, and I am the Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Fort Worth, Texas. My name is Canon John Peterson, and I am an Episcopal priest, canonically resident of the Diocese of Washington, District of Columbia. Hi, I'm Tom Plumley. I'm a minister in the Christian Church, the Disciples of Christ. I serve as senior minister at First Christian Church, Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm Andrea Luxton. I'm president of Andrews University in Berrien Springs, Michigan which is affiliated with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I'm Othel H. Lakey, a bishop in retirement of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, and I live in Buford, Georgia. Hi, I'm Tony Matthews, and I'm the senior pastor at North Garland Baptist Fellowship in Garland, Texas. Well, thank you everyone for being here today. We do appreciate your involvement and participation in this program, particularly regarding nominal Christianity. Back in March of 2018, the Lausanne Movement issued a statement on nominal Christianity, emphasizing the critical need to have evangelize nominal Christians. Writing about the report in Christianity Today, Griffin Paul Jackson notes that nominal Christians have become the biggest mission field in Europe. Others would argue that the United States might not be far behind. Nominal Christians can be defined as individuals who say they are Christians, if asked, but rarely attend any church and have no clear belief in traditional Christian doctrine. The Pew Report claims that in every Western European country except Italy, there are more non-practicing Christians than practicing, with 67% not believing in the God that is described in the Bible. The reasons assumed for this drift include lack of trust in established churches and religions, the impact of a growing materialistic society, and the decreasing sense of need in a technological society for a saving faith. Some more successful attempts to evangelize nominal Christians have included alpha courses and church planting programs with their emphasis on Christ-centered doctrine and community. Yet the numbers in this nominal group continue to climb and more churches are imply or emptying. The question for the panelists today are these. First of all, would you agree that the United States is not far behind Europe in this trend towards nominal Christianity? Second question, how successful do you consider your faith community has been in preventing this shift towards nominalism? And then finally, how as faith communities can we counter this shift? That is our subject for today, and those are the questions I've asked our panelists to consider. Let's return now to those who helped to begin the program. Dr. Luxton, welcome to the program. Thank you. You started off by talking about some trends in Europe that are quite disturbing. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I'd like to go back a little bit further first, and, you know, my background is English literature, so I'm going to just quote a couple of lines of a poem, famous poem to start with. Um, goes right back to 1851, Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. And these few lines are very important. It says, The sea of faiths was once too at the full, and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now I only hear its melancholy, long, withdrawing hmm. roar. Hmm. Uh, and that interesting comparison of the basically retreating of faith um, which was starting in the European context way back in, in, in the 19th century. Then you had the two world wars. And I mean, where I grew up in the 
late 50s and 60s in England. Um, I grew up in a village. There was a beautiful little church there, maybe five people there on a Sunday mm. morning. Right? And that was mirrored in just about every small village and town around, just, just that, that complete sense of, of not engaging. But yet if you spoke to people, they would say, oh, I'm Christian. Well, what did that actually mean? Nothing really beyond a, a label. Um, because that sense of real faith and engagement was, was just not part of the community. It was not part of culture, just not really part of much of society. Um, so I saw that ha when I first came to the United States um, in the 70s, I was actually surprised at the difference of the much deeper level of engagement in, in Christian faith here, which now I think is, is moving the same way uh, as, as Europe moved. The danger to me is this, that they're, they're, when, when, it's, when you're dealing with nominal Christianity, there is no, nothing really to pass on to the next generation. Because uh, nominal Christianity is just formality. It, it, it's not engagement. And how do you pass that on with any excitement? Um, how do we respond to that? I, I, I think it's got to be for the church, for Christianity, to find some way of showing its relevance. Um, and that can only, at the end of the day, I think, be on an individual level. I think it can only be an engagement in society to show that it's actually something that makes a difference, where Christianity is really part of the world, not, not separate from and distant from. Just a few reflections. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Luxton. Now, Canon Peterson, you also made an opening comment. If you could uh, elucidate that, please. Yes, thank you. Um, I have no doubt, actually, that the United States is perhaps not far behind Europe in nominal Christianity. And uh, those who say that they are Christian but seldom attend church, I know uh, in the moderator's statement he said, not believing in the God as described in the Bible. Mm -hmm. First off, I would like to ask, uh, what is this God who is described in the Bible? Um, who, how... What is, the, what is the normative nature of this God who is described? And does this not just simply reflect a particular theological perspective instead of a dynamic God who is acting and participating in different cultures today? And how does that God act and participate in the different cultures today? It is just possible that the church is not speaking and addressing the issues that speak to people today uh, be they in the United States or in Europe. There are many different models that ch different churches are using to confront nominal Christianity. And I have to say that certainly one, uh, that the Episcopal Church is certainly one of these statistics that are mentioned in this, uh, that the decline in membership uh, has been sh happening for several years now. and. Uh, and the question that the moderator asks, what is your church doing to prevent uh, this shift in nominalism? Many of you saw, I'm sure, on your televisions, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, uh, Michael Curry, preaching at the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Instantly, the presiding bishop became a rock star in England. Uh, because his message of love and reconciliation spoke the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. For that matter, I was in England shortly after that wedding, and that was certainly the talk. Do you know the presiding bishop? Do you know the presiding bishop? <laughs> uh, everyone was so curious because he had mm. made such a tremendous impact in that society, in the culture uh, that uh, and Andrea was speaking about. As a result of the presiding bishop's leadership, uh, he has called upon the Episcopal Church to have a Jesus movement. And the main thrust of this Jesus movement is to, and I quote, to go into the world to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to go into the world and help to be agents of God's instrument of grace, of reconciliation, to go into the world, let the world know there is a God who loves us, a God who will not let us go, and that that love can set us all free. So, nominal Christianity. Is the presiding bishop's uh, concern here in the Jesus movement hmm. a way to help rectify that situation today? 
All right, thank you very much. We're off to a good start. Let's come over to Bishop Olson. Welcome, welcome to the program. And your thoughts on the subject, please. Thank you. I, um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting dilemma. I was thinking about this where, you know, people belong to church nominally. And it seems that uh, I think grace completes nature. And our natural communities of families are something that currently we belong to only nominally. Uh, mm -hmm. For the time being, as far as a sense of belonging, uh, it rests almost entirely on intentionality, the intention to remain married, the intention to remain in relationship or not, uh, the intention to be a father for a while or not, uh, or a father or a stepfather. All of these are so fluid that everything rests on nominal intentionality. And so therefore, you really lose the nature of something. Uh, you know, we talk about intentionality in, in evangelization, and I think it's, it's indispensable. Mm -hmm. However, it can never replace uh, nature. Uh, and I'll say this in, in this way. It's like um, there's these great movements like Alpha, and all of this are making a contribution. But there, there's an emphasis on intentional community to the point that we neglect the community we're given to that pre-exists our act of a will. And so then otherwise we form intention to be in relation or community only with those whom we wanted to, to believe. Mm -hmm. And soon the gospel becomes something about the great all-powerful ego. Uh, and I think that's, that's really at the heart of a lot of this nominal Christianity. I call myself a Christian, but I don't believe 90% of what Christianity's taught since the time of Christ. Well, that's not a very good Christian. <laughs> just, I mean, you, you're welcome to your own opinions, just don't. You know, let's let's engage in some truth and advertising. Mm. Mm. All right, thank you, thank you, Dr. Matthews. You don't have any nominal Christians in your church. Though. Well, I, I hope not, but you know, you never know. And I I, I think um, the bishop is is spot on. I, you know, terms and titles are important, and I I'm kind of grappling with this one here because, of course, mm. nominal means in name, name. only. Mm. And as the bishop mentioned, you know, um, the people are just using the term Christian so loosely. And um, one of the articles I read here um, says that we've used the term Christian so broadly that it sometimes doesn't bear a resemblance to itself. Mm. And so I think we, so many folks are saying that Christianity is dying or that potentially it may. Um, Ed Stetzer wrote an article, and I, 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 I'm, I'm more optimistic because what he says is nominal Christianity is dying, but Christianity is not. And so I think we just need to, you know, are, are these nominal, I have more questions than answers. Are the nominal, and I don't even like using the phrase yeah. nominal Christians, because are they actually Christians if you do not know about Christ and salvation and um is that the right term mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. describe these individuals, nominal Christians? So that's that's or Christian just, or non-Christian, but I want to be included in the family. I want to so be included I, in the family, yeah. but are they actually? Mm. And then that will um, speak to our. Um, of course, we need to evangelize, but it would probably help our approach to these individuals if we determine if they are in Christ or not. So that's just right. <laughs> now, we could, of course, define Christianity even more carefully and, and finely and talk about discipleship, which, which goes another step beyond it, it, yes. what most Christians think about Christianity. And speaking of disciples, disciples of Christ yeah, right. and, and Reverend Plumley. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're next. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a couple things I want to say about this. Number one is uh, uh, we, we, we make a mistake if we... Uh, paint too rosy a picture of the past. Mm. Uh, uh, there, there really have been only a very few periods in uh, American history, uh, uh, you could certainly say world history, uh, but let's just talk about American history right now. Uh, very few periods in which um, our, our regular share of nominal Christians uh, actually went to church. Hmm. Uh, I, I think. I think what we're what we're discovering is that 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 group that has always been there uh, as uh, Christians in name only um, uh, used to go to church, 
uh, and because they felt like they had to, or they made, made good business contacts there, or you know, you, you name why they they want to get their get their kids a little bit of the socialization that goes along with with uh, Sunday school and, and things like that. Uh, uh, and now, and now they they simply have have stopped going to church. There's there's still the same group of folks. Uh, it's just that that in in sometimes past sometimes past. Uh, they actually they actually went to church. Uh, you, you think of you think of what was going on in the frontier of, of America. You think of what was going going on back on the East Coast when the frontier was was the Wild West. Um, not not greatly religious uh, 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 people. Or uh, so so let so number one, let's not paint them as. Paint that period with with, uh, with rose co colored uh, uh, glasses. Uh, I, I think we 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 are in every generation faced with uh, with with uh, challenges in how to interpret and make relevant the the faith that we that we know and the faith that we have, uh, and and that is that is as real now as it has ever been. Um, uh, yes, it's it's disturbing to me um, uh, to to see fewer and fewer people going to church. Not only in my own congregation or my own uh, uh, tradition, but in but but uh, across the face of of, of the church. Um, but you know that's mm. that's a part of what our challenge is. All right, thank you, Bishop Lakey. What is what is the issue, well, as you see it? I wrote down a term when Dr. Matthew was speaking. I called it normalizing nominality, hmm. meaning going along with what he's saying that that it's kind of a misnomer to say nominal Christian. That's almost an you know contradiction in term. Yeah. Either you what he used to say, either he is or you ain't. <laughs> you know, you can't be in in between. And 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 we we have to be a little careful because I look at it from the other angle. We have some folk, they call them, what, evangelicals? Is that what we call them? And, and, and they call themselves, they're not nominal Christians, but some of the stuff they do is so contrary to the Christian faith. So anybody who can hang out a single a sign or something that says, I'm a Christian, and then you can do whatever you want to do that contradicts the gospel, or you can say, I'm a Christian, and they'll do anything that the gospel commands us to do. So I'm with, with, with uh, uh, T Tom Plumley here. Let's go back to where it was. You, you didn't have no whole lot of nominal Christians uh, back in the New Testament. Either you were a Christian and, and, and had the danger of going to the, to, to the lion's den, or you weren't. And all through history, in fact, in our church, we call ourselves CME, Christian Methodist Episcopal. Well, off camera, we call it folk who come to church on Christmas Mother's Day and Easter, you see. <laughs> that, that's, it, it, it's nominal. And so we, we have to get away from claim, letting anybody who want to claim Christian and say, no, that's not it. If you're not, as Jesus said, loving your neighbor as you love yourself, mm -hmm. if you're not doing the work of Jesus Christ, then you're not a Christian, mm -hmm. no matter what sign you hang out. Thank you. You're not starting your own church now. No, not quite. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Let's come down over to Dr. Luxton. You wanted to add some yeah, no, thoughts some, to this. Yeah, no, some great comments. Um, the, there's, a, there's another level, though, I want to introduce here because I think that what has happened and what has changed is um, what I'm calling biblical literacy or, or Christian or, or literacy and understanding. And f from an education point of view, I think that is huge uh, because um, that makes the gulf of communicating to people much, much harder um, because their whole perception, their whole worldview, their whole concept is, 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 is somewhere complete, is somewhere very different. And so that becomes a much harder for, for you to, for us to kind of have a conversation which um, bridges where they are to, to where we would like them to be as active Christians. Um, how do you even begin to talk if someone has no clue what Genesis is or the gospel. I mean, if, if it's just not there, you're, you're going somewhere different, way harder. And I think that's not what normal Christianity leads to. All right, thank you. We just have a few seconds left. Reverend Plumley. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Uh, 
I, I think we cannot talk about this part of the church's decline, if you want to call it that, without also talking about those who are refugees from the church, those who have been beaten up. Uh, and that comes under what Bishop Blakey was talking about, the question, are we loving all people as Christ loves? And that comes back to the issue of discipleship versus what everyone else might think about Christianity. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. We're going to be back in just a few moments for the summations, but this is an important announcement I'd like for you to hear first. Thank you, Pastor Lutz. We hope you are enjoying today's program. If you would like to learn more about the American Religious Town Hall, please visit our website at AmericanReligious.org. That's AmericanReligious.org. There you can read about the mission and history of the program, learn about the town hall estates, and view past programs by clicking the appropriate menu buttons. Each week, Pastor Lutz looks forward to receiving your letters. You may write to him at the address shown on your screen. Send your letters to Pastor Jerry Lutz, American Religious Town Hall Meeting, P.O. Box 180118, Dallas, Texas, 75218. That's Pastor Jerry Lutz, American Religious Town Hall Meeting, P.O. Box 180118, Dallas, Texas, 75218. Thank you for writing, and thank you for watching. And now, back to you, Pastor Lutz, and today's closing statements. Welcome back, and I do look forward to hearing from you. Some of our programs that we discuss here uh, actually have their beginnings with the letters that you turn in, that you send in, either by email or send it through regular mail. We do appreciate your feedback. And as I've said before, agree or disagree, it helps us when we hear from you to know uh, what you're thinking and whether or not the program is, is actually something that uh, you can share with your friends and to increase the audience for the town hall. We're going to go to our summations now. Let's begin with Bishop Olson. I think it can be agreed among Christians that conversion is a part of the Christian life. A call away from sin to a call to a life in Christ, a call to love of God and neighbor. I think the challenge for us today is often there's a pressure to try to make faith and morals relevant to the way I live instead of making the way I live relevant to faith and morals. Thank you, and for participating today. Now, Reverend Plumley, your summation, please. Thank you. I think the most important thing that's been said during this program uh, was uh, the statement that uh, the church has found relevance by making a difference. Uh, I think that is uh, when people uh, understand that the church uh, and that religion in general uh, is, is about something real and something that makes a difference. Uh, anxiety about our numbers uh, doesn't help us to be the kinds of difference makers that God needs us to be. All right, thank you. Now, Bishop Lakey. Thank you very much. I should think that Christianity might judge itself by what its Lord said. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was out of doors and you took me in. If we don't do these things in the love of Jesus Christ, then all of our Christianity is not nominal. It's not Christianity at all. Mm, hear, hear. Dr. Matthews, your summation, please. Yeah, I, I think this is another example of, um, among other things, of people, a lot of people have a lot to do with the church, but not enough to do with Jesus. And from a spiritual element, we have to remember what the scripture says that uh, in terms of declining numbers and people um, falling away from the church that in the last days, difficult times will come. And he goes on and he describes the type of people we will have. And he says that folks will have a form of godliness, but they will deny the power. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of our evangelizing and seeing nominos becoming nuns, mm. the Christians are remaining convictional. And I think that gives me some hope and optimism. Thank you very much. Dr. Luxton, your summation, please. I think we can go back uh, even to the Old Testament in Isaiah, where you've got that, that contrast between the people that go to worship um, and then say, well, where are you, God? I'm doing all these things right, and you're not around. Uh, and the answer is, well, yeah, but what do you do when you get out of church? Uh, 
you know, you're bashing up on each other, basically. Um, and this is what true, really true church is or true fasting is. And then there's a description, which is the same thing about, about how we treat each other. So I completely agree that, that that is the only way that we can move things forward. Um, but I still, have a, I still have a deep concern about just that, that level of comprehension and the fact that there's this, the secularization and the, the lack of comprehension of what faith is makes the communication gap harder and harder for us to cross. And um, I, I don't know how we respond to that, um, but, it, but it is a concern. Irrespective of all the good things we do, I think the, the gulf is deepening. Thank you, Dr. Luxton. Now, Canon Peterson, your summation. Yes, I really want to pick up on what Andrea is saying because, and, and she spoke a few minutes ago about education and, mm -hmm. and the whole process of education. And the church is not a vacuum. And to be in the church means that we are a part of a long tradition. And the fact is, is that frequently today, people have no sense of that tradition. They have no sense of the gospel. They have no sense of what Jesus is saying. Mm. They, except they go to church or they do not go mm -hmm. to church and that is certainly a situation of being nominal mm. I would like to um, go back to the point that I was making earlier in relationship to the Jesus movement uh, because this movement here is a community of people whose lives are centered in Jesus following him loving liberating and self-giving relationship with God and with each other in creation. And I think that this fits perfectly into what Otho was saying in his final summary today about exactly what the gospel is for the oppressed, for the poor, and how do we respond And in that whole loving context of Jesus Christ. You know, it's interesting, as I've, as I've heard your summations and your discussion today, I don't think I've ever met anyone who's ever introduced him or herself as a nominal Christian. <laughs> Most everyone wants to think that they are actively, or they'll admit, I don't go to church very often. Wow. So I guess what we would say to them is not just on Mother's Day, Christmas, or Easter, but <laughs> explore your heritage with regard to where your roots are. If you're calling yourself a Christian, go ahead and get that way. Become a Christian. Thank you so much for joining us today. The Charter of the American Religious Town Hall provides that Roman Catholics, Protestants, Jews, educators, and others may appear on this program and can declare their beliefs without hesitancy. And the rest of the members of the panel will uphold and guarantee that American right to all who will appear, irrespective of race or creed, so that the rest of the world can see that here in America, we believe in civil and religious freedom, not only in theory, but in reality. So now, friends, until next week, at the same time, and over the very same channel, the American Religious Town Hall meeting stands adjourned. And may the God of all of us bless all of you.